My name is Ian Anderson. I'm Chartered Civil and Structural Engineer. I'm the East of England panel member on the Institution's Panel for Historical Engineering Works. We're at the port of Felixstowe, which is the largest port in the UK. It handles four million TEUs, which is 20-foot equivalent unit containers, per year. A quarter of those go out by railway from three terminals within the port. The port was originally created as part of uh, Colonel Tom Lyne's vision for Felixstowe to be a resort and also a dropping off point for his railway from Ipswich to Felixstowe and thence to the continent. Unfortunately that didn't go ahead but the port, although it's had its ups and downs, is now the largest container port in the UK and uh, is a vital part of the UK economy. Felixstowe port itself developed slowly, not least because the pier that he built next to the dock basin was intended to be used for taking continental passengers to the continent. Unfortunately the Great Eastern Railway developed Parkston Quay and they owned the railway and they didn't let that happen. The port went into some sort of decline but it was interrupted by the First World War and the Second World War. During the First World War a good part of the quay that you see behind me immediately was the Naval Air Station where they built flying boats against, which were used against submarines. Between the wars, nothing much happened. The port was still able to take small coasters, but it hadn't been developed very much. Second World War, it was used by coastal craft and air sea rescue craft. Then Gordon Parker bought Felixstowe port after the war, and he brought with him a manager, Ian Trelawney, and between the two of them, they started developing Felixstowe. By 1966, Ian Trelawney realised that the container was the future, and so he developed the first of the container keys, which is the one behind me, which has now been completely redeveloped and deepened. At the same time, they were developing roll-on, roll-off ferries, and over a period of years in the 60s, they built four berths for roll-on, roll-off ferries. There are still two left from what's left of the old port, but the major part of the port, 3.7 kilometres of quay, is actually container quay. Depths vary on the Trinity Quay between 11 metres and 15 metres, and on this one, the two berths here will take the largest ships in the world, and they will be about 16 metre depth at the moment. But the intention is to further extend the quay and further deepen it to 18 metres so it will carry on being a prominent port within the UK. To develop the port, civil engineers working for both the Port of Felixstowe and for outside consultants and with the contractors as are used to design the key walls, the loading areas, the piling that's used and also the modelling of the river estuary. The port is constantly dredged and one of the big challenges when they built the extensions to the quay with Trinity Quay and Landguard Quay, when as they were built, they had to model the whole of the estuary to make sure that the, it didn't interrupt the river flows. One of the challenges is to make sure the piles go down deep enough to support the large gantry container cranes that are used. These are the largest cranes in the world and they lift all the containers off to be transported and stacked on the rest of the area behind the quay. The rail termini, the three of them, between them, use 66 trains per day to carry containers away. So a quarter of the four million TEUs that the port handles go out by rail, and the intention is to increase that. My main raison d'etre has been that every day is different. No two days are the same and I would recommend anybody to take civil engineering as a career because it's everything that I've done has been something that I haven't done before and every place that I went to was a new horizon that I was ready to embrace.